been sexually molested. We had to ask, could David have been responsible for that? Tell me about uh, David Cathcart. Was, was he abusing you too? Who? David Cathcart? Que si que? Que si el que si el te... Abuso? No, no, wey, no. No. No, he all the time tried to, to help, especially me. Especially you? Yeah, David, no. No, he tried to help me. But you went to court and said that he was abusing you. Yeah, but if I don't say that, Gabe kicked me, I have to do what, what Gabe said, because Gabe told me, Diego, he told me, if I don't do that, uh, they told me, you go out from the orphanage. If I don't say that, I mean, I go out, what do I do outside? He would kick you out? Yeah, and I don't have family outside, so I have to do whatever he say. He frightened you that much? Yeah, n not only me, the other guys too. What did he tell you to say? He said I have to... Bueno, él me dijo que dijera que... He told me to say que él me that he raped violó. me. Raped? Yep. But you were not? No, no. No, they never touched me for do something like that. One by one, three of the boys who had accused David of molesting them told Bollard the same remarkable story. Each one of these boys said that Diego had regularly beaten them and physically abused them, and they were scared to death of him. And the last thing they wanted to do, now that they had escaped that environment, is to make a new enemy of him where he, knew, he knows where they are and he knows how to find them. They're saying to you, He's innocent, he didn't do this, but we're afraid to change our testimony. Absolutely. But what about the last boy, the one still living at the orphanage under Diego's care? In order to have a child removed from an orphanage to come to court to do anything, you have to have permission from DEEF. We filed a petition with DEEF that he be permitted to leave the orphanage and come forward to testify. DEEF, which is the equivalent of our Child Protective Services, denied the request, stopping Bollard and his partner in their tracks. We were really scratching our heads as to how we were going to make this happen. Because the judge was three quarters persuaded that Dave was innocent. But there still remained one quarter of doubt. I remember he will take us skating. I remember he had a Nintendo, and we will ask to play with it. If I were to see him today, I will feel ashamed. Remarkably, the last boy, Daniel Escamilla, heard about David's appeal and came forward on his own. I was young, and I would say anything they told me to say. They say he raped us at the same time, but that was a lie. We made it up. Danielle was only nine years old when he first accused David of molesting him. He says because he was so young, he was afraid to tell the truth. They made me feel really nervous because I knew the story wasn't true, but I was afraid they would do something to me. I thought they were going to do something to me. They were going to hit me. But even though all the boys were now saying they lied. David's battle wasn't over yet. Judge Flores, who had already upheld David's 12-year sentence twice, would have to agree to preside over yet another hearing. She did, and she said she did because she was determined to find the truth. And what happened in that room, she told us, was astonishing. Yo mandé traer al director. Something important happened when I ordered Gabriel Diego Garcia to come to court. Each young man squared off in front of Gabriel and said, you forced me to lie about Mr. Cathcart raping us. Gabriel, of course, denied it. It must have taken a lot of courage for those boys to do that. I could see that they were literally shaking as they faced Gabriel and said, you beat me regularly in the orphanage. You made me lie about Mr. Cathcart or you were going to throw me out into the streets. They were upset, but while they were shaking, I could see that they were actually relieved by their recanting. Were you afraid of Gabriel when you changed your story? Sí. Yeah. Yes. Yo lo tenía que hacer porque... But I had to do it because I've never felt this bad before. If you live with a lie, your life is destroyed. I'm sure those boys had a conscience 
And I'm sure that every day they thought about what they had done. And at some point in time, I was confident that it would affect them enough that they would tell the truth. And that's exactly what happened. How do you feel now? Well, yeah, for the first time, I've got hope. Hope, yes, because finally, after that horrendous seven-year ordeal, Judge Flores declared David Cathcart innocent of all charges. His record would be wiped clean. As soon as the paperwork was done, he was free to go home. But that wasn't all. Judge Flores advised the prosecutor to begin an investigation of the Door of Faith Orphanage and Gabriel Diego Garcia. As a judge, it's my sworn responsibility to bring the truth to light, and in this case, the truth came forward. Maybe it came late, but the truth was established. There was one person who was very unhappy with the court result, Diego. And he left court that day with a vow, witnesses say, that David Cathcart would not win his freedom so easily. He wants the world to believe you are guilty. I guess with a conversation like that, you know what kind of a man he is. What would you like to see happen to him? I would, I would put it in God's hands. I, can, I cannot think of revenge. I cannot think of these things. He's kept you in prison for That's almost going to destroy years. my life. My life is more valuable than his. But before his family could celebrate the affirmation of David's innocence, his freedom, anticipated for so long, out of the blue came something utterly shocking. They're not restricted. Put the phone call through. It's very important. Now there was something new and dreadful, which could make it even worse. Would freedom elude David Cathcart yet again? I still have a drop of blood left. And they're not going to be satisfied till they get it. New arrests and his last hope in the conclusion to Trails of Intrigue. I still have a drop of blood left. And they're not going to be satisfied till they get it. David Cathcart, after nearly seven years in a Mexican prison, had finally been found innocent of molesting four boys at the Door of Faith Orphanage. Judge Flores had ordered he be set free and had also ordered an investigation of Diego and the orphanage. We've been told tomorrow and next week and give it time and just we, we have and we have and we have and then all of a sudden for the day to be here that says, hey, your dad didn't do it. Um, I don't know, that's probably more than one word to describe how we felt. We were elated, excited, we had questions, when's he coming home? What's the date on that? Um, what do we need to do to get him home? But that didn't happen. Three days before David was set to be released on child molestation charges, he found himself back in court, this time for drug trafficking. No comprende. Yes, I can. It is not restricted. Put the phone call through. It's very important. David's family and attorneys were stunned. How could this happen? We had such a feeling of, uh, it would be like trying to climb Mount Everest and you're reaching the peak only to find you're climbing the wrong mountain. I mean, we just had a feeling how can this be? We've not even heard of this before. Mystified, Attorney Bollard rushed back to Mexico to meet with the federal prosecutor on the drug charges. He said, yeah, what I have here are two sworn affidavits from prison guards that claim that back in 1998, they were searching your client's cell and they found heroin in his shirt pocket. It's not very good for his credibility. He had never formally been charged or accused of it. There had never, ever, prior to three days before his scheduled release, ever been a charge or a complaint filed with the federal court. That was the guards, first anybody had heard of it. Absolutely. These guards resurrected by memory something which they claimed had happened two years ago and charged him for the first time. Did Dave ever use drugs in prison? Never. Dave has never used drugs. Anyone that knows him can tell you that. But here was the cold fact of it. If David Cathcart was found guilty of drug trafficking, he'd face another 10 to 25 years behind bars. Bollard knew that to prevent that disaster, he was going to have to cross-examine those guards and somehow prove that they were lying. 
the only evidence they had was what the two guards said happened. They set a court date for that day. The two guards didn't go, didn't show up. So where were they? After a scramble for information, Ballard discovered the guards had been given a 30-day vacation that very morning. Prison guards don't have 30-day vacations. They may get a week off once in a while or two weeks if they've been there a long time, but a 30-day vacation, it's unheard of. How is it possible they wouldn't have been at the hearing in the first place? We suspect they were told not to go. By whom? Ultimately, by the same man that put our client in jail six and a half years ago. And so, once again, we confronted Diego. Undue influence? Absurd, he said. I don't know what kind of influence I have in, in town. Say, I don't know. You're not trying to keep David Kaspar in jail in Mexico? No, I don't have a reason to, to keep him. Why? He doesn't do nothing to me. If he does something to the children, the children is the one, not me. And yet, those very children had already told the court that Gabriel had forced them to lie, that David Cathcart had never molested them or harmed them in any way. But now, regardless, it looked as if David would remain in prison. And then, the judge overseeing the drug case, not Judge Flores, became suspicious, ordered the guards arrested and had them questioned. Not only did their stories not match, they changed several times. If this is something that you're going to put a man away for possibly 25 years, you'd better get your story straight. And they couldn't even do that. Jeff? Yeah? Bill Bollard. Bollard relayed the good news back to David's family in California. You know, we feel very confident that the federal court judge is moving this thing along. And it wasn't the, uh, quite over yet, though. Cleared. First, the judge would have to rule in David's favor. In California, David's family held a candlelight vigil and prayed for the best. Any day now, he could come home. Any day. Are you afraid to get your hopes up? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I've had my hopes up and down so many times I don't even think I can count and tell you. Seven long days and nights went by, and there was nothing, no word from the court. The official silence almost unbearable. And then, on a moonless night when David didn't think he could take one more day of waiting, two guards came to his cell and told him he was free. I was in my room sitting there, winding down at 10.30, and I get a telephone call. Dave is standing out in front of the jail. I, I thought at first it might be a trick, but I said, Dave, don't move. We'll be right there. But it wasn't a trick. When Bollard and his partner arrived at the prison gates, David was there, speechless, but smiling. They took this picture outside the gates, free at last. I kept asking him, how do you feel? How do you feel? And he just said, I'm numb. I, I don't feel anything. I can't feel anything. I'm numb. I can't believe it yet. He couldn't believe he was out. But thanks to Diego, it still wasn't finished. He and his attorneys were now accusing Bollard of bribing the boys to change their original testimony. They also accused Judge Flores of taking bribes. Did you report the judge to uh, a higher judicial authority? Well, this is uh, except the, the, my lawyers and my board. Yeah. When they reopened the case, called the boys in, and say the same things about the white one, two, one, two, three, four times. No, three times. Why three times say the same thing? And the fourth changed the things. The charges went all the way up to Mexico's Supreme Court, which ruled there was no evidence anyone took any bribes, and David Cathcart should never have spent a single day behind bars. He was completely vindicated. And that's how it came to be that on a beautiful summer day, David's sons and their families prepared the homecoming they thought would never happen. After seven excruciating years, the nightmare was finally over. Now they let down their guard and gave in to joy. Yeah, you can tear the house down, but you can't destroy the foundation. <laughs>